everybody, welcome to the 2015 award ceremony. This is where me and a few of my friends and fellow reviewers got together and cast our votes on what we believe to be the best game in the particular category that comes up. By no means is this our top 5 and bottom 5 picks of the year that will come in the next video for me and obviously for other reviewers they do their own separate top five and bottom five next year when i'm all more set up because obviously i've just got my 3d model and i'm hoping to have all this animated next year but next year i'll start the poll a little bit earlier like you know november even though games come out in december and get you the general viewers involved to cast your votes but for now enjoy this award ceremony and enjoy the top five and bottom five that are coming up after this video so what we're going to do is we're going to read out what the category is the nominations the winner and then the reason why it won so let's dive right in to the 2015 award ceremony so our first category is best story so which one had the most creative or fun or most engaging story with the nominations being Undertale, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, Albino Lullaby, and Spooky's House of Jump Scares, with the winner being Undertale. Undertale has to be the most creative and special story of the year, mainly because you can take as much or as little away from the story as you like and still feel completely satisfied with the amount of time you got from the story. For example, are you the type of person that will only play through it once? You've met some fun characters along the way that had a nice little story about being free and then congratulations, you escaped the underground end of story. Or are you the person that wants to get the full story and you'll go back and play it in all these different ways like pacifist and genocide to uncover the true full story? Or do you want to go even further than that by hacking into the game's code and changing all of the data values so that you can find all of the secret characters like Gaster and learn even more about the story? You don't have to because the simplest thing of go through the underground and escape is still a very nice contained story so Undertale won overall on story for being so creative in the way that you can take as little as you want or go as deep as you want and just having an amazing story overall about the monsters wanting to be free and then maybe some time travel and special powers if you go deeper in next up is best soundtrack the nominations being Splatoon, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, Undertale, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. And the winner is Undertale. There was pretty much a close, close vote on this. Everybody had their own reasons why they voted for the things they voted for and Undertale literally only won by two votes it was this was the closest of all of our votings in each category but it was decided in the end by everybody that Undertale won and the reason why it won is because it has the most variety in its tracks like Splatoon Great, amazing soundtrack, but it's all the same. Lively rock music to shoot your fellow squids. Shante, even though every track's a little bit different, it's still the same adventure on the high seas soundtrack. Whereas Undertale has so much variety from a simple, normal tune where you're just walking through the ruins to a lovely melodic piece like heartache when you fight toriel or breaking dawn when you fight asgord to a classical like rockish music in metal crusher when you're fighting metaton to absolute all-out 
chaos and madness when you're fighting Omega Flowery with the track of Your Best Nightmare. There is so many different tracks in so many different, different musical styles in Undertale. There is no way that this wasn't going to be the winner, even though it was pretty close with Shantae coming in second place. Next up on our list is Best Graphical Style. This is not best graphics overall. This is just the one that had the most unique and or clever, creative, fun style. With all of our nominations coming with a reason to help you better understand what I mean. With the nominations being Albino Lullaby for its creative use of crayon-like drawings with its strange Unreal Engine 4 lighting. Spooky's House of Jump Scares for its absolutely delightful, charming, cartoon, Adventure Time-like graphics. Undertale, for its creative blend of Atari 2600 black and white pixel art, combined with its colourful, regular pixel art, and Plague of Shadows, for its absolutely stunning pixel art and lighting combined. With the winner being... Spooky's House of Jump Scares. While this was a close one again, mainly with Albino Lullaby for how everything looks weird with the Unreal Engine, Spooky still won overall. There was just this beautiful charm that it had to it, seeing this horror game in this beautiful cartoony graphics, and you're running for your life, but everything is still colourful and cartoony, and it just had such a wonderful charm that most of the people voting in this poll just had to go with Spooky over everything else, even though all of our other contestants were very, very creative and have very amazing graphical styles, with Undertale coming in a very close second. Our next category is Best Graphics Overall, so unlike our Best Graphical Style, these are the graphics that were the biggest and blingiest and looked the nicest, with the nominations being Fallout 4 Xenoblade Chronicles X, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, and Bloodborne. And the winner is... Xenoblade Chronicles X, with absolutely phenomenal and breathtaking graphics. While all of our contestants were amazing to look at, Fallout, the nice colourful world of the Commonwealth, all of these worlds were very nice and pretty to look at. Most of them we had seen before. We've seen the wastelands of Fallout. We have seen the misty, murky areas of Bloodborne. It's basically just Dark Souls, but in a Victorian London castle feel, rather than like the actual medieval period. Whereas Xenoblade Chronicles, which was our most voted for, has an expansive world with many, many different terrains, from a beautiful looking forest to stunning plains that sweep out into the distance, where you can see all of these giant dinosaurs, to this crazy looking swamp-like area with big glowing trees that looks a bit like Chrysalis's hive, with all of the variety in the world and how colourful it looks and how beautifully shaded it looks and the fact that there's three different versions of the world, that being the day stage, the sunset stage and the night stage. There was no doubt that Xenoblade Chronicles was going to win best graphics overall and even if you do not like JRPGs and you do not like Xenoblade, it is worth at least looking at a video to see how stunning Xenoblade's graphics really are. Next up, Best Multiplayer, with the nominations being Star Wars Battlefront, Call of Duty 3, Evolved, and Halo 5 Guardians. And the winner is Star Wars Battlefront. I'll admit that I myself have not played much multiplayer across this year. However, from what I have played of Star Wars Battlefront and what other people that like things like the Call of Duty series have told me is that Star Wars Battlefront took an immense amount of the votes and won overall. Being that it is a fresh take on the shooter experience to a degree, it's not just the dirt grey brown army shooter of Call of Duty or another space shooter of Halo 5. 
It's massive 20 versus 20 multiplayer fights make for some chaotic matches. The fact that you can play in three different ways during the fight, be it fighting on the ground, shooting each other to start off with, to piloting a TIE fighter on an X-Wing, to taking control of a hero, makes it a fun experience that feels fresh plus all the hype around star wars episode 7 i mean my god have you seen it star wars was going to be our clear winner and i mean just in case you're wondering nobody voted for revolt because that was just a glorified dlc shopping mall but yes so let's move on to the next one next up on our list is the best shooter and the nominations being metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain fallout 4 Splatoon, and Halo 5 Guardians. And the winner is... Splatoon. Despite how amazing some of the gameplay and gunplay is in the shooters mentioned, Fallout 4, amazing gunplay. Halo 5, still as fantastic a gunplay as it ever is. They Even if the story's not that good, they always know how to keep the gunplay spot on. However, all of these are single player experiences for the most part, barring Halo 5, and they are all very stale. It's like we are on our fifth Halo installment, and we've played the space shooter. We know the deal with the space shooter. We're on our fourth installment of Fallout. We've seen the wastelands. We know how to fire a pipe pistol. Splatoon brung a creative, fresh, new spin on the shooting genre where it's just paint the entire arena and hope you put more paint down than the other team but if you shoot the other team along the way then go for it and of course you can pop the Wii U on at any time matches are always available you don't always have to get a lobby together and play with friends the music and the levels are so colorful and creative that it just makes this overall lovely fun happy shooting experience that everybody should definitely go check out and was our most voted for game i mean obviously that's a given with this was the one that got the most votes but there was no ties like oh it wasn't one to splatoon to two to the other it was literally every vote went into splatoon bar two or three so it took like 90 percent of the votes so let's move on to the next one next up best rpg nominations being undertale fallout 4 Xenoblade Chronicles X and Mario and Luigi Paper Jam Bros. The winner is Undertale. Pretty much all I said about the best story of Undertale can be translated over here to the best RPG. An RPG where you have been invested into the characters of this world as you're going through this world, but you yourself as a character can choose when to stop are you because this is supposed to be you projecting yourself into the game hence role-playing game are you the kind of person that will escape the underground and leave them all trapped and that's you satisfied or do you have a bad conscience and you want to go through the game again but try and save everybody and help them escape like the story thing undertale pretty much comes down to take away as much or as little as you want and still come out satisfied with of course the leveling up si system being very creative and unique by only getting level ups from killing stuff like in all the other games but having a secret twist if you do decide to go down the route of killing stuff whereas if you don't kill stuff you don't get any levels, but you get alternate endings, and it makes for a very fun interactive RPG, especially because all of the characters in the game remember all of your actions, not just from your first playthrough, but from previous playthroughs. Like, if you happen to die to certain bosses, they'll say, like, that's the look of somebody who's died twice in a row to me, because they remember your deaths. Or if it's your second playthrough doing something else... They'll say something like, I remember in a past life 
that we once used to be friends because it remembers your previous run through. So with all of these charming little elements, it makes for such an interactive experience that it got best RPG with Xenoblade coming in a close second. Next up is best open world. The nominations being Fallout 4, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain, Xenoblade Chronicles X, and Assassin's Creed Syndicate. With the winner being Fallout 4. There is just something that got all of our voters, including myself, completely enamoured with Fallout 4. Maybe it's the way that they've done the levelling up system, and how even though you're exploring this big open world, every time you get a level, you feel like you're progressing. You've got a star, and no matter what you put that star into, you feel the tangible effects. If you put it into Lead Belly, you can feel that you're not taking as much from eating. If you put it into um, Toughness, you will feel yourself not taking as much damage. So, for being a big open world, you still feel the sense of progression, even though you're actually just fucking around, breaking people's pots and kind of like stealing their shit. Whereas in games like Xenoblade Chronicles X, where you're planting probes, yes, you're planting probes, but you feel like you're just planting probes and you're not really getting anywhere, even with the story. So, for being the most fun and creative, Fallout 4 won our votes overall, with 75% of the votes, and the other 25 pretty much go into Xenoblade with a couple of Assassin's Creeds. And we come to the in, close to the end here with Best Horror, with the nominations being Albino Lullaby, Spooky's House of Jump Scares, Soma, and FNAF 2 to f <laughs> I can't finish that, they're not real horror. But anyway, it doesn't matter about them, because the winner is Spooky's House of Jump Scares. This is one of the most perfect horror games of this year because after all of the absolute dos that we have had chucked up onto steam and steam greenlight and all of the other things that are horror that take themselves way too seriously it was so fun and refreshing and nice to see a horror game that is still horror but absolutely takes itself not seriously whatsoever. It knows it's a parody of horror, and it's going to make sure that not only it has fun with parodying the horror genre, but also you have fun while being slightly jumpy and scared at the same time, hence the name House of Jump Scares. And, oh, its art style just adds to this weird... Horror, cute horror experience. So I would definitely tell you to all go play Spooky. And with that, we will move on to our second to last category. Moving on to our second to last award. The best independent game. With the nominations being... Spooky's House of Jump Scares. Undertale. Rocket League. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. And the winner is Undertale. While all of our contestants were absolutely fantastic, Rocket League, really amazing, fun to play with your friends, Spooky, absolutely charming to play, and Afterbirth, as good as it ever is sometimes, except when you're playing as Keeper, they were all fantastic, and everybody, including myself, will be playing them all across 2016, but the one that we all kept coming back to in the deciding votes was Undertale. A nice, simple RPG that allows you to take as much or as little away. It has a fantastical graphical style with its simple black and white tone mixing with the colourful pixel art of the world when you're walking around. A fantastic soundtrack with a huge amount of variety from the rock that is like Metal Crusher to the calming music of Breaking Dawn when you're fighting Asgore to the all-out madness of your best nightmare with Omega Flowery and 
the story, again, from saying what I said previously, you can take as much or a little as you want from it. Do you just escape the underground and that's it, you're free and that's the end? Or do you play the game over in a different way to uncover the secrets of the world and then go into the INI files and hack it to unlock even more secrets like Gaster with so much variety and the fact that you can take away as much or as little as you want? Everybody pretty much said, even though all of our contestants were great, Undertale has to be the overall winner of the best indie game. And so, we move on to the very last category, which is the best AAA game of 2015 by the votes that we collected. With the nominations being... Fallout 4 Xenoblade Chronicles X Splatoon and Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. And the winner is... Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. There is a saying of keep it fucking simple stupid and way forward kept it so simple but so enjoyable. It didn't need a giant ridiculously sized open world adventure like Fallout or Xenoblade. It didn't need to have any special gimmick like Splatoon firing ink around. All it had to do was take Shantae and do what she does by whipping things with her hair and fighting Risky the Pirate and just give it a nice little update and oh what an update, it's a beautiful, beautiful game, fantastic music, fantastic graphics, a fun, enjoyable story, nice, about 6-7 hour game, so enjoyable and Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for Half Genie Hero next year. The next installment of Half Genie Hero already looks fantastic. I have not seen any actual proper, you know, review footage yet. We've only seen the beta footage from Way Forward themselves. But if it looks anything like the beta, oh, it's going to be sublime. So, the keep it simple method kept it simple and it easily outweighed the titans of the open world market like Fallout and Xenoblade and all of those with the crazy unique gimmicks like the 20 on 20 Star Wars Battlefront or the spread your ink of Splatoon. With of course if you want to know all four nominations Fallout 4 coming in a close second. And with that, we reach the end of the video. Now, of course, you may not agree with a lot of the choices, but these were just our own personal choices. Some of them, not even my own choices. These were just the choices that were most voted for. And of course, these were just little two-minute preambles. There is no way to judge a game by one quality alone. Yes, Undertale might have the best soundtrack, but it might have a terrible story. So, I would like you all to join me in my next video, which will be the top 5 and bottom 5 of 2015. This is now my personal opinions. What I thought was the absolute best of the best, with full reasons why, and obviously what I thought was the worst of the worst, with full reasons why. There will be a link to that video in the description below once it's done because it's going to take a little longer than this one and with that I thank you all for watching and have a great Christmas, have a Merry Christmas because I don't know if the top 5 and bottom 5 will be finished for Christmas but if it's not have a very very Merry Christmas I wish you all the, mo the utmost fun and joy I hope you get all the presents that you are after so thank you all for watching Merry Christmas and I will see you for the last special video of 2015 which will be my top five and bottom five and I'll see all of you then